the things we agree on, we feverishly agree on. The things we disagree on, eh, feverishly too. Competitive angling should not have any co-anglers in it. That's not a co-angler problem. That's a boater problem. This isn't a guide trip. I don't have any responsibility to make sure that the co-angler catches fish. The co-angler has to deal with a whole lot more mentally than the boater does. Eventually, I put a stop to it because I just screwed him with boat positioning. It gets worse. I've got to worry about this goober in the back of the boat. What What, what is your question or comment that you have for today? Well, well, Randy, Mr. Esteemed Guest, I want to tell you, over the years, we have uh, agreed on a handful of things, and I've disagreed with well, a good fair amount of things, but I always try to give credit where credit's due. The things we agree on, we feverishly agree on. The things we disagree on, eh, feverishly too. Now, about this co-angler thing, first, every tournament organization I've ever fished with has had rules about casting up front. Every single one of them. That's Bassmasters, by the way, Federation Nation. That's FLW, by the way, as well. They've always had rules, so that is incorrect. Okay, well, first first of all, I would like, uh, let me address the first one, I'll get at that. I would like to see the Bassmaster or MLF rule that states you can't, that you are not allowed to fish in front of the boat. Cause I have never seen that rule at, at all. I mean, if you could, do you have that? I'd like to see it forward to where it says that in the rule. I will look through all my stuff and try to find it for you. When you talk about the mental toughness, that's not a co-anger yeah. problem. That's a boater problem because if the boater has a problem with staying mentally tough and keeping in his proper mind frame, while the co-angler is in the back of the boat, that's not on the co-angler because guess what? The co-angler has to deal with a whole lot more mentally than the boater does. We've got to be prepared to work around whoever it is we draw, fish to their style without fishing on top of them, throw something they aren't, stay at the same speed, work with horrible casting angles sometimes, um, think outside the box and we're parked in the butt end of the water while the boaters got all first glance. Now, when you spoke about the one co-angler throwing ahead of you, I couldn't agree with you more there. That's wrong. And that shouldn't be done because when it comes to co-anglers, I'm hard on those. I teach about how to be a co-angler because the first thing they have to do is respect the hell out of that guy in the front of the boat. It's his investment. He's the one out there putting all the time into water practicing. You got to pay him homage. You got to treat him right. All right. And real quick, let me hop in. So CT, you fished as a co-angler for 18 years. Is that correct? Yes, sir. All right. So what is the question that you have for him? I want to, I want to get Randy's take on it. Answer me this. You mentioned the co-angler catching your fish. If you have boat position, you have the front of the boat and you've passed that fish and that co-angler catches him. How is that your fish? But to answer your question, as far as, if I go past a piece of cover and the co-angler throws in there and catches it, that all goes back to, I may want to make two passes around there. Let's say, for example, I'm flipping and pitching a row of bushes or flooded laydowns or stuff like that. And I may want to pick my way through there slow with a jig. And then I want to may come back through there with a creature bait to try to maximize every, you know, possible thing that I can do to catch fish in there. And I don't want to have to be concerned about somebody catching fish that I have found that has taken me, you know, time, money, effort that, that influences my very existence, the future, find my financial future, whatever, just to have a co-angler catch it that is just in it for a one-off in a tournament. And it goes back to me saying, as far as if somebody wants to learn and get better in the sport and progress in the sport, that is when the Marshall system is far superior to a co-angler because from an educational standpoint, there's no limitations on that. No, it's it's beneficial to the organization taking the money to be a marshal to sit back and have a sandwich and watch somebody fish. They could do the same thing from their couch. There's a difference. There's much more education always to have that line in the water. Yeah, it, there is. Yeah, there's no doubt about that. But then again, that unfairly affects the outcome of a tournament and it, and it undermines the hard work and effort that a pro put into locating and finding those fish and managing those fish. I mean, it may be a four day sure. event and every fish that a co-angler picks behind the pro takes away his chances of doing well. in that so, so throwing ahead, 
way off limits. With all that said, though, that Coingler doesn't know who he's going to draw. Sometimes doesn't know the guy at all. Never heard of him. Never fished behind him. Doesn't know his style. He's got to be prepared to go out there and fish whatever conditions he's handed from whoever he, he's handed. Where the guy's a great guy, where the guy's a jerk. So that Coingler, he's got to be pretty mentally tough. Now, if that Coingler being mentally tough, mean will think on the fly, is a problem for the boater, that's the boater's problem. So do I believe at the ultimate level there should be co-anglers? No, no. That's where you need marshals. That's where you need folks there to keep an eye on the rules. BFLs and a lot of the other organizations that think that they're pros, that call themselves pros because they can buy a jersey and stamp anybody's logo or catchphrase on them, uh, not necessarily pros. That's a different, whole different story. But the co-anglers... That's where the future of the sport is. Okay. Well, in, in regards to the other thing, like I said, there wasn't, when I started out, we didn't have co-anglers. So I don't really go for the notion that that's the future of the sport because the sport did fine without co-anglers there. In all fairness, I think a, a bad rap that you've got, but it's a rap nonetheless, is that with forward facing sonar, people are saying, well, it's just an old timer syndrome thing. He just doesn't want the sport to progress. I don't think that's true. That's where I disagree with a lot of people's knocks on you because I think you do see what it could do to hurt fisheries. And in some aspects, I completely agree with that. However, when you say no co-anglers at all, which is the future of the sport, people learn, get into it, get their own boats, get out there. You can't say it's not old timer syndrome and then just completely bash every co-angler that ever dipped his toes in the water. My next question is what do you call a pro? So anybody with a boat's a pro then? Well, boat or co-angler. I mean, anyone anyone that has a boat can fish the boat it's side. Right. On a lot anyone of with a boat is a pro. See, that's not that's not true at all. Well, I basically, think, real quick, he was just using the the word pro in place of boater. So let's just oh, change okay, it. Well, then that, yeah, right. then that's 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 then the answer is real simple. There, if you don't want someone fishing behind you and picking up that fish that you're planning on getting on the second second uh, pass because your lure selection wasn't right on the first, then you don't sign up for that event. Then you don't what? You don't sign up for that event. You don't put your name on the dotted line. Well, no, that I don't. That that doesn't really make any sense as far as how somebody manages their fish because you may not know what is going to generate that strike. That that fish may be want a reaction lure. It may want a slow bait. It may want a different profile. And the only way that you're going to figure that out is by having the time to make those changes without having to worry if somebody else I is going to that. that fish off. Well, I, I, I agree with that, but it goes back to the antithesis of the whole situation. When you sign your name on the dotted line to fish with a co-angler, you're, you're signing your name to fish with them. Well, and again, that goes back to the tournament organizations, not putting enough regulations on what the co-anglers can and can't do. I mean, that's, they could fix that in a hurry simply by making them having to cast from the back part of the boat and not having to cast past the middle line. Or, you know, if they're pros, if they're pros, tell them, say, you know, let me make a hundred casts on this brush pile before you cast in there, or let me make a hundred casts to this boat dock before you cast around it. Then that would be a little bit different, but let's take an example for a boat dock. I can't count how many times where I was fishing boat docks that have pilings on it. And I have to hit every single piling to possibly generate a strike. And I pitch in one piling and then my co-angler pitches in the piling three feet away from there. And that is what I'm talking about. The, the undue unfair advantage or I mean influence that they have on a tournament. So that co-angler that is complaining about the use of electronics or whatever that boater is choosing to do, he's going down the bank too fast with a crankbait or he's punching in grass all day and he does not. And I don't know how to punch grass or whatever that technique that that boater is using. And that co-angler doesn't like it or is not skilled enough to determine how to catch fish behind that boater. Then that co-angler has signed up for that. And on the flip side, that boater that is saying that I have located my fish, I actually want to go down this bank back and forth five times with five different lures. But I signed up for an event where I have a co-angler on the back of my boat, so I may not be able to fish it as effectively as, as I want. So that was one of the things that I came up as kind of like a solution 
that is I guess it isn't really a solution, but that co-angler signed up for that event. So he's complaining about something that that event allows. And that boater is complaining about in something that that tournament organization allows. And that's kind of where that butting of heads comes from. But they both signed up for it. Yeah. I think I remember Rick Clun made a statement. I, I heard one of the uh, my subscribers were talking about a statement Rick Clun made in terms of co-anglers and his advice to co-anglers were that you guys need to pretend like the back of the boat is the front of the boat, which I told, in other words, they should be casting out the back of the boat all the time, not just to get them out of the way, but, but that is because they have the best angle. It's like so many times I'll be working down a bank and my co-angler will try to cast up by my trolling motor. He makes a 10 foot cast along a riprap. He's never going to catch one, but if he casted behind the boat, he would have the exact same angle I did coming from a different direction. And, you know, so a lot of people, they just won't do that, even though if that's the best way to catch them. That, that's where the nuances is, or that, that's where the nuances are in training someone on how to be a more effective co-angler. I agree with that. It's like if you're uptight to a bank or uptight, let's say, to a multi-stall dock, like a marina dock, something along that, yeah, you you got to get better at that. But with that said, though, I mean, I've fished behind a ton of boaters and 98 percent of them have been absolutely, absolutely wonderful. And we've I've made some wonderful friends doing it. I fished behind some guys that had no business driving a boat like dangerous, like crazy. Get them off the water. So it goes both ways. You know, I think there's coinglers out there that have no business being in the back of a boater's boat. Absolutely. I could not agree with that more. But I think what rubbed me really raw and what I saw that I thought was just not passing the smell test was kind of the whole comment about how it's every one of them. And it's, it's all of them. And that's not, that's not anywhere near the case because it is the boater that shells out the money. It is the boater that does practice. By the way, I did a lot of my own practice too. Um, but you have to respect that guy. You have to take care of him. You have to show good etiquette. I know there's a difference between etiquette and rules. You have to adhere to both. And as hard as you adhere to the rules, you got to adhere to that etiquette. And with BASS and the original Federation Nation, the way that was brought up grassroots, they made sure to differentiate exactly. There were rules on whether the uh, co-angler could even net the fish or not for the boater. That yeah, was so, the I mean, and that's kind of what he was referring to earlier when we discussed, like, there are ways that boaters do help the the uh, i mean the co-anglers help boaters and there are ways that they you know they are kind of a hindrance to the boaters but um i have some more people i got to get to ct i really appreciate you coming up I had some great questions Take i knew care, you were going to want to come pleasure. up on that all right guys big shout out to ct really appreciate you coming up